ladies and gentlemen, I think we'll get started. Uh, as you can probably appreciate, uh, you're a bit of a captive audience because we've got nothing else going on at the moment. And as I hope to explain in the next minute or two, there's a reason for that. Um, because Bendigo District of the Astronomical Society has decided to be a little bit adventurous with uh, Bastrop presentations. So this is something that you, uh, you may not have experienced at Bastrop before. And that's why we want you all here, so you can either cheer or jeer as you see fit. Astronomical conferences, by their very nature, tend to focus on contemporary issues. Astronomy is a cutting-edge science with plenty of potential for creative imagination, hypotheses and technical advances aimed at the present and far into the future. But what about astronomy's past? In considering the 2007 Bastrop program, the committee aspired to a varied and entertaining program. Part of our planning considered astronomy free from the cutting edge, where the rich heritage of its earlier development could take centre stage for a few moments, allowing us to witness, reflect on and enjoy a milestone in astronomical history. Keeping in mind that many cutting edge issues of yesteryear have gone on to become the everyday facts of scientific life for us all today. And so to our heritage presentation, the first, hopefully, of many similar presentations of future Vastrocks. It gives me great pleasure to present to the Assembly of Vastrock 2007 an eminent astronomer who will brief us today on his study of comets. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming from France, Charles Messier. Bonjour, Madame et Monsieur. Thank you, thank you indeed from this humble traveller for your warm welcome. I have indeed come a long way to see, be here before you this afternoon, and may I say what a privilege and honour it is to be invited to address a gathering of so many distinguished scientists, mathematicians and students of the universe gathered together in the one place. In spite of what uh, somewhat unorthodox dress sense, which I can help but notice amongst you, it is clear that you share with me and my Paris colleagues a great interest in Le Sujet Scientifique. My name, of course, is Charles Messier. It may be that you have heard my name and that some of my work is not entirely unfamiliar to you. Which brings me to the purpose of my presence here today. I am here to speak with you about my researches and contemplations on the subject of comets. As you may know, there have been many discoveries in the field of astronomy in recent years, since Messrs. Newton and Halley, despite being English, <laughs> gave to the world their most interesting insights into the true size and nature of the universe. It has been known for many years, of course, that the planet orbits the sun just as the moon orbits the earth, and with them we have discovered a host of other objects which also makes their journey around the solar disk. These are, of course, the comets, of which we discover more and more with each passing day. Indeed, it seems that these new objects appear so often that God's handiwork is becoming so complicated, so intricate, that sometimes I think that the universe becomes always messier and messier. <laughs> And so to the subject of my talk. As we now realize, these remarkable apparitions are bodies like the Earth, whose paths lay in the realm of the planets. But their journeys about the mighty solar disk are of the greatest ellipticity, as you say, shaped uh, color Earth. They are not, as was once thought by Monsieur de Brahe and others, mere exhalations from the Earth floating like clouds through the air above our heads. Alas, 
that we shall never know the nature of their substance. Modern science has shown how far away these things are and how fast they travel. It is quite impossible that we shall ever travel deep into space to examine them. Like the stars and the planets themselves, their chemical compositions, the, the knowledge of the kind of stuff of which they are made, will always remain beyond us. There is no possible way of ever learning whether they are made of water or ice, or stones like the earth, or perhaps some exotic material unknown to us. Yet we can observe them through our telescopes. And we know that their tails are great streams of dust and vapor, millions of kilometers long, blown from them in some manner by the hot breath of the sun, like the wind as it blows across the sand in the desert. If any inhabitants do occupy these bodies, they will suffer greatly, and perhaps have to dig for themselves deep tunnels into the ground to avoid being swept away into space. Neither are comets uh, les potons du catastrophe, sin astrologique, uh, as the astro astrologers would have us believe, foretelling some terrible event. It is in our study of them as natural philosophers, arm et femme de raison, that we may unlock their secrets. Not in contemplation futile of their accidental appearance in our skies and their motion against the constellations and figures of barbaric antiquity. My friends, this is a great time in which we have been privileged to be born. After centuries of superstition and ignorance, we have come now to the age de raison. With our science, we will soon unlock the secrets of all the world, overcoming at last the sad trials of war and pestilence which now beset us. As we march now towards the end of the 18th century, I see ahead of time of enlightenment, of untroubled peace, prosperity, and stability for La France, under the rule of our King Louis XVI and our beloved Queen Marie Antoinette. 